Everyone's here, yay. Okay, so we're starting chapter four. Uh, if you are someone who wants to make up the chapter three tasks, you just need to start coming to intervention. Uh, I've already had a couple people coming for that. Okay, so we're starting chapter four. We have today and tomorrow to introduce chapter four. Tomorrow we're having a test. What? Two questions. Number one, do you have your tablet? Number two, do you have your notebook? Five points each. No notebook? You fail test. Get a notebook. I have a notebook. Get a notebook. You want me to call your dad? Yeah. I'll call your dad. Go get a notebook. You tell your dad you need a notebook, I guarantee you'll get a notebook. Bring a notebook. Tell me to fail a test. There is no excuse to not have a notebook. Chrissy, when I said it's open note test tomorrow, I'm giving you one day notice. Considering you're supposed to have one all the first quarter, you were told at the beginning of the year to have a notebook. That's no excuse. No, like Get a notebook. Right. What? Quick question. So yeah, you did tell us like halfway through this. Yes, the it is. Okay. So, yes, I haven't been checking, but I'm really upset with y'all's performance on the Chapter 3 test. Yeah, I'm the So, I want y'all to have a notebook. Now, I prefer a steno notebook. Will I take this notebook? Yes. Will I take this notebook? No. What about this one? Yes, I'll take that notebook. Okay, I want your notes to be in your handwriting. Why don't I like this one, Mr. Poole? I like this notebook. I know you do, but then people can easily print out stuff and put printouts in there. No printouts. All notes must be in your own handwriting. Okay, which is why I don't like those kinds of notebooks. Gosh, you sneak it in on me. Okay, if the sheet is smaller than a standard piece of paper, it's harder to sneak it in on me. So, everybody understand, bring your notebook tomorrow. I expect you to be taking notes. I expect you to use your notes on my test. Okay, put your. Why did I ask you? <coughs> tablet, tell you don't have to have your tablet. You can close up your tablet. Look, I'm not taking notes on this. <coughs> you can take your notes on the tablet, so you don't have to have it out. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so I expect you to use your notes. What about Evernote? Mm, I don't know. I got to think about that one. I don't want you to take your notes with Evernote. I don't. I don't use Evernote. Either, so. Okay, so we have today and tomorrow to get through the start of this project so you can start doing your research next week when I'm gone all next week. So today we're starting a new section. This is, um, to me, the most, the first, not the most, the first mentally complicated section. I don't think the power supply section was very hard, although you as a class didn't do wonderful on it. What's up with the Irish? Okay. Uh, <coughs> So, this class, there we go. We're talking, starting about the motherboard, but that's very general. We're talking about the motherboard, we're talking about CPU, we're talking about the main meat potatoes of our PC in this chapter, okay? The first project is on the motherboard for chapter four. The second project, also for chapter four, is on the CPU, okay? You've already decided what kind of motherboard you're gonna have. You just don't know it. Half of you are in blue seats and half of you are in white seats and you're divided in half and I'll tell you later which one you have. Okay, <laughs> so objective for this section, okay, is to understand about the different types of motherboards and about the components that are on the motherboard and that's pretty all-inclusive, okay, because it is the most important thing. Everything, we said, said this in chapter one, everything has to be connected to the motherboard. We're specifically talking about those things that are semi-permanently part of the motherboard. I said semi-permanently because the CPU is not really permanently, it's semi-permanent when you take it out, obviously. Okay, oh, while I'm at this, okay, just so you know, down here at the bottom of, let me switch to roll so you can see, down at the bottom of this section, and by the way, there's way more here that you can't see yet. I have this open so you can look at it if you want to, some of it I need to hide, but I'm gonna start putting when I do notes, I'm going to start saving the PDF and putting it there. You cannot print out this and use it in the test. You can print it out or open it up and transcribe what you think is important to your notes. So if I go a little too fast for you to write, realize I am going to put those up there as well. So if you want to transcribe those later, which is why it's opening. It's just opening really slow. Okay. <clears throat> that is not the size I said I wanted that file to be. I said I wanted two per page, and I did four per page. Anyway, so those are going to be up there as well. And you will see two files, unless I forget. Uh, one file being first period, one file being second period. It may behoove you to look at the other period's file. 
just in case I forgot to oh say something, which I already did, this class, okay? Why is my pen acting funky? There we go. Okay, so a little review of a term, right? Talked about this in chapter one. What is form factor? Anyone? Uh, the, like, the components of the computer have form factor. Term that describes the? Size. I'll start out for you. Size. Size. Shape. Shape. I only have one student today. Hackers, anyone in the room? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Just one more word. I'll make it many words. General. General. Of a component. Okay. Right. That's my terminology right there. Okay. So generally, it's talking about the size the shape, and the makeup of a component. I could have used the word makeup. It would have been a lot easier than saying the general characteristics of a component. Anyway, okay, and that's really general to say that. Okay, so it not only is the physical aspect, the form factor of this defines the physical size, the holes that are in the motherboard, as well as what stuff is on it too, okay? Specifically, when we talk about form factors in the motherboard, it defines what kind of CPU and what kind of memory can go in it, okay? So it's a general term, but the form factor is going to come back to get us in, in later on in the uh, course. Wait, did I get forward to one too many? Okay, so things we're going to talk about. Um, motherboard, uh, motherboard selection determines, because of the form factor, that's why I kind of got ahead there, it determines what kind of CPU we can use. There is only one on most Okay, didn't fall out. There's only one CPU socket. This CPU socket and this CPU socket, these are both ATX motherboards. Okay. Everybody look here. Here's my two CPU sockets. Do they look anything similar whatsoever? No. This one and this one. They look nothing alike. Nothing at all do they look alike. Does this CPU look anything like this one. No. They aren't interchangeable. Okay? When you have a C motherboard, it determines the CPU because it has one socket. And that's it. We're going to talk about sockets in a minute. It has one socket, and that socket determines what CPUs can fit in it. That doesn't mean this is the only CPU that's this socket type. But there's a limited list that are this socket type. Okay? There may be hundreds of different CPUs, but there's probably only 10 or 20 that are that socket type. Okay? So our motherboard determines the type and speed of CPU could, we can use. And it, it determines the speed because an older socket takes slower CPUs and a newer socket takes faster, so it takes faster ones. The motherboard also determines the chipset. controls the flow of information around the motherboard. ARD, that's motherboard. Pretend I wrote just wrote motherboard there, okay? When I look at a motherboard, I always know where the chipset is, okay? And there's a north chip and a south chip controlling the north bus route and the south bus route, okay? The north chip gets hot, okay? North chip gets hot, so it has a heat sink. So that right there is the north chip underneath this heat sink. The south chip does not usually get hot, doesn't ha handle as much information, so it is right there without the heat sink. But it's a permanent part of the motherboard. When I select a motherboard and I get a chipset that's on there, it's never to be changed again. Okay? When I look at this one, 
holding it by the CPU. There's my north chip underneath this heat sink, and there's my south chip. Those two things control the flow of information around the motherboard. Okay? They are the policemen. You see, you may go now. Please stop. You may go now. You may go now. Okay? It controls how information, and all the information goes around the motherboard and it goes to the what? Keep naming components. What's the most important thing that's plugged into my motherboard? CPU, okay, controls all the information that goes in and around the motherboard to I'm the so CPU. <laughs> what? So I didn't hear him. He mumbles into his hand. But I didn't hear him. I mean, good job, Adam. Good job. Good answer. CPU. Excellent. Okay. So it controls the flow of information around the bus, which I can see if I look at the underside of it. Good luck trying to decipher that. But it controls the flow of information. Everything ends up, hold on, this one has a bracket on the bottom. This one has a piece of tape. All of everything goes right here to the CPU. Let's see if this one's even better. There we go. Everything goes right here to the CPU. Let's see the pins better on that one. Okay. So the chipset controls that flow of information. Once I select my motherboard, it is never to be changed again. Okay, that's part of when I select it. I'm selecting what kind of CPUs I can put in it. I'm selecting the chipset. We don't spend a lot of time talking about chipset selection, by the way. I just want you to understand the basic uh, functionality of it. Well, it I determines the number of expansion slots and what can I have. This and this don't have the same kind of expansion slots. I've got one, two, three, four there. Actually, I've got the same thing. One, two, three, no, four, five, okay? I can't add expansion slots. When I pick this motherboard and decide I'm going with it, I know how many things I can add later. How many high-end gamer cards can I add to this one? Three. One. One. I can't ever add two. No matter what I do, no matter how much I want to add another gamer card, I will never add another gamer card to this, this motherboard, okay? So if you are choosing a motherboard, and you guys are all going to choose three, We're gonna, you're going to do a project like the sales one that I showed you on the, on the power supply, and you're all going to sell us three motherboards, one for a gamer, one for a business, and one for a home use. The gamer one's got to have at least two video card slots, because no serious gamer would ever buy a computer that doesn't have the ability to add a second gamer card in. Does mine have two at home? No. I mean, it has two slots, but I only have one gamer card, but I could put one in. If all of a sudden I won the lottery, but then I'd buy a new motherboard because mine's kind of getting old. Anyway. But anyways, I could add another one in. No gamer would want one with only one slot. As a business PC, do I even care if there's one in there? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I've got somebody who's doing some graphics stuff for me, and I want to have one good card slot in there. But the chance of needing two is zero. Okay, in a basic home, one is probably enough. How many other expansion slots do I need? Depends on what I'm going to use it for. Okay, but I can't change that after I've bought the motherboard. The number of slots I got is what I got, and I have made bad decisions before. I've got a server over there. I'm like, I'm never going to add anything to this thing. That's one. Has no video slot because it had integrated video. Because you don't add video cards to servers, and it doesn't have a normal PCI slot. Has none just has these little PCI1 slots on Because I was like, ah, everything's integrated that I need. Turns out the net integrated network card does not work with Linux. And I'm like, crap. I wish I had got one with another expansion slot. So the number of expansion slots you get is what you're stuck with. The type of memory. Current types of memory are called SD-RAM. Okay? SD-RAM was Somebody says they've got SD RAM, it's the base memory. After SD RAM came DDR1, just called DDR by the way, I shouldn't put that one in there. It's called DDR, and then we got DDR2, and now we have DDR3. DDR stands for double data rates, twice as fast as that. And then the two just means second generation or third generation. Okay? When you get a motherboard, it takes one of these and they're not interchangeable, okay? This is a Duplo and this is a Lego. You can't put a Lego on a Duplo, it doesn't fit, okay? So when you buy a motherboard and it says it takes DDR2, that's all you ever put on that motherboard. Now, there's different speeds of DDR2, okay? 
there's slower and faster speeds of DDR2 memory. So it's not to say that there's only one kind, there's only one. DDR2 is a kind of memory, and then there's different speeds of that. Okay? Your motherboard goes the same speed as your memory. They sync up. Okay? So if you buy a motherboard that goes 800 megahertz, which is a normal DDR2 speed, and then you buy memory that does 667 megahertz, then your motherboard. you just slow your motherboard down to 667. Because the motherboard can't speed up the memory, okay? But they sync. They go the same speed. But if you buy RAM that's faster, will it sync up with the? Yeah. If you take this out, put 800 in, then it will all of a sudden it will go up 800. Depends on the speed your motherboard. It specifically, will say takes the memory. And if it says it takes DDR2, it means it takes every kind of DDR2. And so, would you buy the fastest DDR2? You betcha. Okay, but DDR3 is faster than DDR2. So oh. but you're stuck with whatever it's got. Whatever slots it has is what you have when you buy it. Yes? Can you have different slots? Say like you could have one DDR2 and then no. another DDR2. No, because they sync up. Okay. And DDR2 can't sync up with DDR3. There are different speeds. Okay. So you have one kind of memory and that's it. Now, when DDR first came out, they made motherboards that took SD RAM and DDR. But you can only have one or the other in. It would either sync way down with the SD RAM or it would speed up with the DDR. They don't do that anymore. So they have one kind of memory. So when you pick it, you pick you pick the type of memory. That's the only type, whether it's DDR1, DDR2, or DDR3. Okay, so as you guys choose your motherboards, you're gonna get a socket. And I'm gonna say you have to pick get motherboards that have this kind of socket. But I never say what kind of memory it has to take. Now, the motherboards are gonna be specific. You're gonna try to Give me the, we're going to talk more about it tomorrow. You're going to try to give me the cheapest dang motherboard you can for the home user. Just, you're just trying to lowball the competition, okay? So if, if you get one that's the right slot and takes DDR2 and it's really cheap, yay. Because the home one is not for the fast PC, it's for the, I've only got 299 bucks, I need a computer. Hey, I've got the computer for you. And then the, the business and the gamer PCs, you know, for Wilhelm Schmidt here that walks up with 999 bucks, and I'm like, I've got a really good PC for you. And then we've got Jimmy Jones over here works, walks up with 29.99 in his pocket, and I go, oh, this one's got blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you, got, you guys are going to present to us the cheapest motherboard you can get that will run, and a really awesome one. The gamer one, the money is not a factor. You're just trying to find the one that rocks that you're going to say, this is awesome. Okay? So, the form factor and the motherboard we choose is also going to determine the kind of case that we get uh, for our PC. Okay? ATX is the main form factor that we're looking at. ATX describes it as, let me get it, should switch my colors here. I've always got my integrated components then I've always got a CPU socket, then I've always got a memory in this kind of box in a row, and then I've got my expansion slots. And how big this gets from here is the difference between a micro, baby, or a full-size ATX. This part is basically the same. All of them have to have memory, a CPU, and integrated components. And then how big the board gets from there is how many expansion things are on there, how many slots I have. So the basic form factor of ATX doesn't change. It's always integrated CPU socket memory. Okay? So no matter which one I look at, I still got integrated CPU socket memory. And this one's a smaller one. You can see it's they're both ATX. This one's obviously way bigger than this one because it doesn't have those extra integrated things on the end. And then here's even a newer one. Again, here's the North Bridge. You can see because it's the one with the sink. I've got my integrated stuff, CPU, and memory. Now, they can have totally different numbers of memory slots. You can have as few as two, like this one. This is an ATX case, integrated CPU, two memory slots. I could have four integrated CPU memory slots. We looked at one the other day that I pulled up. I think it was in this class. It's eight or 16, some ginormous number of memory slots. It was crazy. And then you can have any number of integrated components down here as well. 
When we look at motherboards, and specifically CPU sockets, there's, this is one thing you have to know by sight, because I'm going to give you pictures and ask you. There's two kinds of CPU sockets, two basic kinds. There's one called PGA, and there's one called LGA. PGA stands for Pen Grid Array. I have this in notes if I was you. Okay? Pin Grid Array. That means that the CPU has pins on it, and the motherboard has holes on it. That's a PGA socket right there. Okay, I got holes and I got pins. Used to be every single CPU was PGA. Okay? You'd set them on, let me line this up right, you'd set them on there, they just drop into place, you hold it down, and you put down this little lever to lock it in place. Every single one five years ago was PGA. That is not true anymore. Now we have LGA for land grid array. And only Intel, only Intel, it's proprietary, only Intel makes LGA. There are no pins. There are dots. See my little dots? Well, I showed you the bottom of the CPA and I said, or CPU, and I said, is this made by Intel or AMD? Only Intel does these dots, okay? See my bottom? See my bottom? No pins. Is that because it's patented? No pin, yes. Okay? So, on this socket for this one, this just opens up. This is a LGA socket on our motherboard. I put this in. This one's super easy. In fact, you can't get it in wrong. It has little notches on it. It sets down in there. This top covers on it. And then this little hooky latch goes on it just like that. Okay, that's all there is to put a CPU in. That's LGA or LAN grid array. Okay, so those are my two socket types. This is a LGA socket on a motherboard. It has that hook. Half of you are going to do LGA, half of you are going to do PGA. One of you is going to do both because you're not listening right now. Every single year, I have somebody, okay, he's getting LGA. Just told you that. Know that. He's going to present three motherboards. Two of them are going to have LGA, and, and one of them, where'd I go? One of them is going to have PGA. I'm not saying you're going to do that, but every single year I've said don't do that. Ever since every single year since the first year we did this project, somebody does it. Why? If you're a PGA, it's a white socket, just like that. Okay? If you're LGA, it has a little hooky. They don't look alike at all. And every year somebody goes, huh? number one, blah, 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 number two, blah, 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 number three, and everybody goes, that's the wrong socket. Okay? <laughs> I'm pointing that out because I'm hopeful that this year will be the year that no one does that. Happener. <laughs> <laughs> typing it Okay, in. <laughs> so this is an LGA socket. It has the little hooky. Okay? You're only going to get one kind of socket. You're also, when we do the CPU thing, we're also going to have CPU fans that you guys have to get. CPU fans are very important. This is a stock fan that comes with it. I like that color fan. Okay. <laughs> CPU <laughs> fans keep the stuff going. Here's a nice ATX. We got, we got the integrated stuff. We got our CPU. We got our memory. We got two ginormous Mondo video cards with an SLI connector up top. What's that? It basically this little thing. You have to have two identical cards for this to work. You get two oh, of the same cards, and you connect that up, and it makes those two really good cards work as one. And now I've got some graphics. <laughs> Has Mr. Pool ever had this? No, it's too expensive for Mr. Pool. But I've always had a card that I thought I could put one in. How much is it? I don't know. I mean, that's probably a four hundred dollar card and a four hundred dollar card. The clip comes free. Let's buy it. Yeah. So. 
And, and realize, like on this one, you're losing two slots because that's two slots it's taken, and that's two slots it's taken. But there's it's probably a, there's a enhanced PCI and a regular PCI that's covered up. Enhanced PCI and a regular PCI that's covered up. So even though it, this has maybe four slots, only two of those are usable if you're going to use those gamer cards. So that's something else to think about when you look at mother. But do you really I need see. that much graphics? If you're a hardcore gamer, you cannot go with the ultra graphics on. Modern Warfare 3 and snipe somebody at the other side of the map if you don't have the right graphics. I can't turn up my graphics line up. I can't see you. <laughs> it gets all fuzzy when you go that distance. And I can't see the guy. I'm sitting here with my sniper going, King, dang, king. Okay, but the guy with the dual core graphic, he's got this dual graphics card. And he's got it on ultra, and he just sees the white of my eyes <laughs> going like this, and boom, I'm dead. <laughs> So if you're a hardcore gamer, yes you do. Okay? I can't turn mine up to ultra. If I turn mine up to the highest graphics on Modern Warfare 3, I move my mouse and it goes kink, new screen. You know, I don't get it. So I can't I can't move my rifle around to try to get you because it keeps jumping because the graphics are so high my my computer can't handle. My video card can't handle. Okay. So I have to turn it down so it flows, but now it's all fuzzy at a distance and I can't see anything. Or it just disappears. And so at some distance, things just disappear. It doesn't even try to render its white, those things, yeah. So I'll look, I'll see a building, That's what happens. and I can't see anybody on it, but there's a dude there sniping me. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't even render that graphics, it's that far away. Xbox One does that too. I'm so yes, like some people want that. Have I ever had it? No. Okay. So I've already said that really AT is out. Really ATX is what's in. And the difference in ATX and mini ATX and baby ATX is how far the thing goes. All right, I got a better picture of this. All ATX have integrated CPU memory slots. Okay, they all are designed like that. But then they have ex they have very specific where are the holes okay you can have, have an ATX that's this big because it's still got four holes that line up it's still fit in a full-size ATX case but then I go out here and now this is a micro ATX case and now I go out here to all the holes and it's a full-size ATX okay if you get a full-size ATX motherboard and a micro ATX case it's not gonna fit okay but when they say ATX, they're this specific. Exactly what size, where all the screw holes go. Did you make your own case? All line up. What? Did you make your own case? Did you make your own case? Sure. Sure. People do that all the time. I make custom cases. I did that for my son's Xbox. The Xbox is in a VCR. You like got to be? I'm not kidding. It's in a VCR. And the, the tray pops out to the VCR holder, and we've got a cutoff VCR tape that sits in there. So when you come in his dorm room, it looks like his monitor is sitting on top of an old VCR with the tape popped halfway out. That's awesome. And if you take the tape off, there's the tray, and there's a power button, and it pops up. That's pretty cool. So, yes. I've seen, someone, I've seen someone that did it with a Millennium Falcon. We were thinking about doing it with something else. I've seen some other stuff. We were thinking, and then we decided we wanted to build him in something to hide it. Well, it was in college, so that if somebody saw it, they wouldn't think, ooh, I get to see it. Yeah, he wants to steal VHS now, that is. So I got that one for Adam Bartle. <laughs> His dad got it at the junkyard, or the dump. It was all smashed. The case was all smashed and bent up. So we basically took the whole thing out, ripped the whole thing apart. I mounted the motherboard to a cutting board, you know those plastic cutting yeah. boards. We mounted it to that, screwed it through that, and then I used, um, basically I used my Dremel tool to cut out the whole inside of the VCR, and then we used the, uh, um, silicone putty squeeze tube stuff to basically mount it down in there so it's I mean it won't come out anymore. Um. Our problem was air and I had to buy some USB cooling fans that are plugged in the back to pull because it would over it overheated initially. How how did you get the motherboard off of the case? Because it takes like some special thing. It doesn't yeah, it doesn't the it just takes, a, it it takes a, a YouTube video and watching how to do take it apart. That's all I found a YouTube video. Well, there's some exactly so take more. You have a well, it does. It does. Actually, I had to buy. You are correct, sir. I had to buy a set of little 
uh, screw bits off eBay for four Whoa, bucks. The torque. And it had yeah the little torque. I mean, because it takes a little tiny, it's a bitsy torque. You know how long it took me to figure out what yeah. that was? Yeah, That's but I got them. Hey, you're pausing me. No pausing. Okay. <laughs> you should let me borrow one of those. No, you borrow it by your own set on eBay. Okay. <laughs> He'll buy the set off you for eight bucks. <laughs> uh, twenty. Ten. <laughs> You're making a six dollar profit all the time. So yeah, I want to check that on the Okay. So the other things on the motherboard, we've got the CPU and the chipset, and I want to talk a second about how CPUs are rated. And we're going to talk more about this on CPUs. Now, normally what's the only thing we hear about the speed of a CPU? What is the one way people tell you how good my CPU is? It's speed in gigahertz. Okay. So if I say I've got a 3.2 gigahertz processor, that is all everybody needs to know, right? That defines everything. But that is wrong. Okay. And I talked about the Pentium 4 versus the Celeron before, and I said the Celeron was better. Crap. C stands for crap, because we've got 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4s and 2.4 gigahertz Celerons. And see, and if all that mattered was that processing speed, they are the same. But they're not, because the thing that is different is called cache. Okay, cache is memory on the CPU. That's the memory that goes to first, right? Okay, yes. There is memory right on the CPU, right on this sucker, there is memory. And in general, Celerons had one-fourth the memory of a Pentium. Okay? And it made them run like crap. So cache, cache equals memory on the CPU. And there are three kinds. There's L1, L2, an L3 cache, and you need to know what these terms mean. If you had a notebook, it would help you out so much. But maybe you have a perfect memory. Okay, so L1 equals memory on the die. What's that mean, Mr. Bull? Okay, so I've got this CPU right here. Okay, but it's a dual core. So on there, there's really two cores. And this has some amount of L1, and this one has some amount of L1. L1 is the memory that comes with each core, and it's on the core. Okay? L2 is shared memory that's off the core. So if my thing says it's got L1 equals 256, L2 equals 2 megabytes. Okay, that means each one of these has that much L1, and the L2 is the shared memory that they both get to use. It's, there's usually not that much cache memory, is there? Like, not no, memory. it's in megs. Cache memory is in, in kilobytes and megabytes. This is the way cache is given. It's, I mean, because it's got to fit on here. They can't put a gigabyte on there. When they can, our computers are going to be sweet. OK, so then I got L3. <laughs> and it's like L2, but further away. And that's as good as I can give it to you. OK? L3 is just like L2, but nobody likes it. It's way over here on the side. I don't Physically, I don't know a better way to explain it. That's what it says in the book. L3 is further away from the die. It actually used to be, when motherboards first came out, the L3 was on the motherboard right next to the socket. Now it's still on there, but it's just like if this is the CPU socket right here, the L3 is not as close physically. Seems kind of weird. Okay. It can have any or all of these when you get when you read about a CPU. It can have L1 and L2, it can have L1 and L3, it can have L1, L2, and L3. Almost all of them have L1. And then whether they have L2 or L3 and how much they have is how you look at how fast that is. Because if I'm looking at two things that are 3.2 gigahertz, 
And this one has 2 meg of L2, and this one has 8 meg of L2. This one is way better. Okay? So as you look at CPUs, you need to look at how much cash they come. That is not something that's listed on the box. Because at Walmart, I'm not picking on Walmart, Kmart, whatever discount store you go to, they're trying to get you to buy their cheap product. And why would they put that they've got a low amount of L2 cash on there? Number one, he has no idea what I'm talking about. And number two, I'm trying to sell him this cheap product. I don't want him to know it's limited. So they usually only give that speed very few times till they show you what the cash is or the memory that comes with the CPU. But if you like, if you went on new egg, would it show? Most well, certainly, yes. Yeah. Okay, so there are two manufacturers of CPUs, and the motherboards that we get are going to determine our sockets, and our sockets are going to determine what manufacturer there are. IBM was the first maker of the oh, personal computer, the original IBM PC, right here. Okay, and when IBM was the only one making the PC, Intel was the only one making the CPU. They didn't like it. Intel could hold me over the barrel and charge me whatever they want to because they're the only manufacturer. So IBM went to Intel and said, Intel, can't be the only maker of CPUs. You need to find somebody else to work with you. And so what Intel did is Intel went and found AMD and AMD made memory and they said, AMD, buddy, I will pay you to help me make processors. And AMD goes, well, if you teach me how to do it, I'll make processors too. So AMD helped Intel make processors for IBM. And then IBM said, you know, Intel, you're doing a good job. I don't need you to have somebody else make a processor. And Intel said to AMD, screw you, I don't need you anymore. And they broke their contract. So what did AMD do? They sued for $2.1 billion and won. And won? And won. So now Intel said, here's your $2.1 billion. You okay. Oh, I thought you meant like, and $1. No, Very they won. <laughs> okay. yeah, Intel broke the contract with AMD. And AMD said, dude, you just made me make all these, process all these plants to make processors. And I'm making them for you, and now you're screwing me. And they did the only good American thing to do, and they sued them. And they won $2.1 billion. So AMD and Intel are the two major CPU manufacturers today. Who's got an AMD processor in the computer at home? Who's got an AMD processor in every one of their computers at home? Who's seen an AMD commercial on TV? No, no one's seen an AMD commercial on TV. Why? Because they don't do commercials. Computer guys know about AMD. But most people don't. Intel does commercials all the time, right? So AMD is the other manufacturer. Sometimes Intel makes the best chip. And research and development goes on. And sometimes AMD does. Right now, Intel makes the best chip. Their i5 and i7. Okay. Their i7 is the fastest chip. AMD has one as good as an i5, but not as good as an i7. Okay. However, Intel advertises. AMD does not. You will never find an AMD chip that costs as much as an Intel chip, ever. You guys that have Intel, and everyone that's in a blue seat has Intel, All right. and everybody that's in a white seat right now has AMD. Okay, everybody understand that? You're blue, you're white. You're blue, you're white. You're blue, you're white. Everybody got that? No, you're blue. Like okay, like if you're in a blue seat, you're doing Intel for this project. If you're in a white seat, you're doing AMD. Why? Because you guys are going to get the same company. So you're going to be able to look at the motherboards for Intel versus motherboards versus AMD. There's not going to be a big price difference on the motherboard. But when you get to the processors, he's going to have way more money left in his pocket than he is. And I want you guys to see the differences. That's why I get paired up with a, somebody who's doing the opposite socket. Okay? Intels are more expensive. They're better right now, but you're going to see they're a lot more expensive. Okay, so what's the difference? So first of all, Intel only uses LAN grid array. Okay, Intel only uses LAN grid array. Intel 
only uses Langure. Langure is only used by Intel. Intel and Langure go together. It's a copyright thing. So if I see you picture this processor, and say, say true or false, this processor is made by AMD, the answer is? Oh, false. False, OK. Somebody will get that wrong. <sighs> the other thing is, I have shown this exact picture before. This exact picture, and said true or false, this is made by AMD. And even if you didn't know that LGA is only made by Intel, it freaking says Intel right there on the picture. Look at the picture. <laughs> OK? So Intel processors are, are all Langer array. Now, they're going to say LGA and some number. That number is actually how many dots are on the bottom. Let's count. OK? The original LGA was an LGA 775. OK? And I don't know what, they're up to 1,300 and something now. Let's count. If they have a different number of dots, they don't fit in the same motherboard. OK? So your motherboard is going to say it has an LGA 775 socket. So all your CPUs have to be LGA 775 CPUs. Because when you do project number two, you're selling the CPUs that go in the motherboards that you presented in project number one. So you're always going to be doing Intel right now. You're always going to be doing AMD. So you, got, you got the picture there. And everything you do on your projects is testable material. So you're supposed to pay attention to each other. Because I will be sitting there writing down notes, and I will add a test question off of Daniel's presentation, and hopefully you paid attention. OK? AMD, the sockets on AMD are called AM, AM2, AM2+, AMD. AM, that has nothing to do with number of pins. They're all PGA sockets. They all have pins on them. That's just, they just do it by generation. This is a second generation socket. Second generation a little bit better than the second generation and third generation socket. OK, I don't know how they figure out their numbers, OK? So theirs are called AM whatever. CPUs, when they go in, let me, uh, OK, so we have different, the processor connects the other one via a socket or a slot, OK? The socket and the slot has to match the processor. So if you've got Intel, it's LGA something. And that something has to be the same on the processor as it is on the motherboard, OK? On AMD, it's going to be AM something, AM something, and they have to match. They have to match, OK? Now, I would tell you they don't all have to be the same, though. You're going to do three different motherboards that are from Biostar that are all Intel motherboards. They don't have to be LGA 775. You can put LGA 775 for home. You can pick an LGA 1132 for your gamer. But they all have to be Intel. And when you do your CPUs, the CPU has to match whatever motherboard you're, you're doing. Okay? So those things have to match up. LGA slots for an LGA, for an Intel motherboard, okay? They all have the little hooky thing. That little hooky thing is LGA. When it's in there, it looks like that. There's no fan on top of it. If I show you a picture of that and say, what kind of processor goes in here? An Intel or AMD processor? The in answer is Intel. Intel, okay? So how do they go in again? The hook just comes off. This bracket opens up, and it just falls right out because there's no pins, okay? It has little notches, if you can see the little notches on the thing. So it makes it so it's really, really hard to put in wrong. You just line up the notches with that. You drop that over top, pull down the thing, and that's all there is to it. Okay? LGA sockets. It's really easy to get the CPU in. Sometimes the heat sink is not so easy, but the, the CPU is really easy to put in on an Intel motherboard. AMD slots are called ZIF. They're PGA, but the sockets are called ZIF. A ZIF socket. ZIF is what, by the way, five years ago everything was PGA and everything was ZIF, but everything currently is not. But all that stands for zero insertion force. Test question, by the way. ZIF stands for zero insertion force. It means when you put in a PGA socket, PGA CPU, you don't push on it. OK? When I open up this, there's a little lever here. A little lever locks it in. It won't fall out right now. OK? So I take the little lever, and I lift the little lever, and now it'll just fall out into my hand. OK? Now, this is an old, uh, this is a, a matter of fact, but it's an older PGA. It doesn't matter. They work the same. 
Okay. There's a little triangle on the CPU. It's a little triangle right there. Okay. A little triangle. The triangle's bugs on both sides, by the way. The little triangle that says, "Hey, this is the spot you're supposed to line up." See a little triangle right there. See that? Oh, sorry. There's one on the other side. And if I look on the motherboard, there's a little triangle right there, and I have to set it right like that, and it should just. Oh, I didn't even look. Triangle right there, and it just drops in. I line it up. Can I help you? Yes. Can you come back to the office? Um, I'll send him down in a couple minutes. Okay. Okay. You're grounded. Where did? You need a big spank. Chase, why are you always leaving my class? Because I have to always get my detention through schedule. One. On Thursday. Why are you just getting empty? Your detention's on the schedule. Where you scheduled? Why are you getting detentions, Chase? That's the real question. Yeah, Chase. Okay, so zero on first insertion force, it means that you line up the pins, you set it on there, and it should just drop in. Once it drops in, you hold it down, you hold it down firmly where you put down the locking lever arm. That what that does is it moves two pieces of plastic like this and locks on those pins, and then it can't fall out. Okay. So zero insertion force. Don't put any pressure on it while you're closing it up. Okay. If you bend those pins, where's my other one at? Oh, it's right there. Okay. You bend those pins. This is perfectly good CPU, or at least it was. By the way, if I have parts sitting out, don't touch them. Those CPUs are all perfectly good over there. And then somebody took a screwdriver or something to them and smashed the pins down. Really? So I said was here. Just because it's sitting out doesn't mean it's broken. I fix stuff in here all the time. And if I'm fixing it, it's not broken yet. So somebody <laughs> screws with it, okay? So anyways, once those pins get bent, you're in a world of hurt. There's 940 pins on the AM2 socket. And it's really hard to unbend one of them. They're so close together. On this older AMD, you know, I used to be able to, on one of these, if one got bent, you know, they're far enough apart that you still get something in there. But on the newest CPUs, they are so close together that if you bend one of those a little bit, you just, just ruin it, you know. So you gotta be careful with that. So AMD all has PGA now, and, and Intel all has LGA now. Okay. They all take cooling fans. Most of the cooling fans are, have uh, connectors with them for both kind. Copper cooling fans are the best kind of cooling fans. If you bought, like this one is an AMD one, came stock with this. It, did, it doesn't have an adapter for an Intel. But if you buy a third party one, most of them have adapters to do either to go on an AMD or an Intel one. Okay. I'm going to stop right here. Chase, what do you think? You gave